Hello and welcome to Lily Bee's Barbecue and Brew. I'm excited to launch the channel and my goal is to bring you sort of the ins and outs and equipment reviews, recipe kits, and pretty much anything barbecue and brewing. So um, I wanted to kind of do an introduction and show my setup and the different gear that I have. But I think what I'll do is just do a brief look at the setup and then We'll kind of get into the gear on a weekly basis through each video so that way i'm not spending as much time on it today and we'll spend more time making beer so that'll be more exciting but i'll just give you a quick rundown of what i've got here and that way you can kind of um, stay tuned to see the gear with in-depth reviews as we go and as i expand so the current setup here on the end you can see our Four tap keyser. This is a 5.2 cubic foot old Kelvinator that I converted, and there will be more on that later. Um, four Nuka taps there, more on that as well. Moving along, we've got our Anvil 5 gallon crucible fermenter. Pretty sweet. That's one of the newest additions that we'll do more on. On the barbecue side, we've got our barbecue hutch here. And this houses gear for really both uh, things. We've got some uh, smoking stuff in there as well as some brew equipment. Got just a microwave there for any heating that needs to be done quickly and outdoor uh, if it's something real messy or whatever. Here we've got the pellet rack. This has a variety of different pellets and then more bulk storage down there. Here's some of the kegs. Some of them are in the keyser currently, but um, I've got mostly torpedo set up and then uh, just a couple other retired soda kegs. And just for temporary storage back here is my 20 gallon anvil kettle with the burner and leg extensions. And we'll talk more about that as well um, in the future. We've got a just a cleaning and brew bucket here with our stainless wort chiller and spinning around got the propane just kind of sitting there and then a smaller kettle that I'm borrowing but I'll explain more on that too as we go so anyway that's just a rough quick rundown of the setup so what we're gonna do today on today's video is I'm actually setting up to brew an Austin brew supply Austin Homebrew Supply Spotted Cow Clone Kit. So this is a five gallon kit and it's a clone of the classic, widely known and sought after New Glarus Spotted Cow, uh, which is a farmhouse style cream ale. So anyway, I'll set you up and kind of talk through the process and we're going to get going. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in preparation for our boil, which is the first step of any brewing process, is to get our burner set up. And basically the process with my propane burner is to attach the gas. It's pretty straightforward, just like any gas grill. We'll attach our gas regulator to the tank. And then all we got to do is turn on the tank and then turn on our regulator and get it lit. But in the meantime, I'm going to get my kettle ready. And I said I would talk more about what kettle I'm using today. And because I'm doing a five gallon recipe kit, my 20 gallon kettle is very much overkill. For a couple reasons. One, the minimum depth for that temperature probe to even be in liquid is something like six and a half gallons. So that's one thing that makes it unusable is we would not have a temperature reading on our kettle. Um, something else is that the width of it is so wide um, that the level of liquid is so low when we go to use our wort chiller to chill it down before transferring to the fermenter it's just such a shallow depth that that chiller 
is a much smaller diameter and can't do a lot of good. So we're using this smaller kettle and during the boil I'm going to talk a little more about what my future setup is going to be to um, kind of solve the problem of needing multiple kettles and what size I have chosen to go with and why. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get my water hooked up and we'll get this filled according to the recipe kit. So stay tuned and that'll be next. So this is actually my first Austin Homebrew supply recipe kit and the steps are basically the same with just a few differences. I've used pretty much exclusively more beer kits to this point and uh, this was just one that I wanted to try and there are a few differences. So for one thing we're not actually going to do a full boil which I don't necessarily agree with but I'm going to follow the kit instructions and what they want us to do is to bring two gallons of water to 155 degrees and turn off the heat. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to clean this kettle just a little bit, add our two gallons of water, which I need to find a way to measure because this kettle is not graduated with um, level markings. But we're going to add two gallons and bring it to 155 degrees. As far as cleaning, I'm just going to go with a little bit of star sand, rinse it out, and then the way I like to get my water is through one of these RV filters, and this pretty well filters the water, and it's a lot less expensive than uh, gallons of purified water, and I've been pretty happy with it. So we're going to clean the kettle and add our two gallons. kettle's already pretty much clean. I like to clean up after each brew rather than saving it beforehand. So it's just basically a rinse and a sanitize. And you might even say it's unnecessary because we're talking about a boil kettle here. So it's not needing to be sanitary necessarily. Okay, so the way I'm going to measure my two gallons, I've got a half gallon jar here. So we'll go with four of these. If I'm a little over, it's going to be all right because we're actually going to add water to get to our final volume at the end. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, time to light the burner. Now in this case my temperature probe is not in the water since we're only um, two gallons so I'm just going to use a meat thermometer or something similar and keep checking the water until we get to 155. In about five minutes we are about 110 degrees. 
about 10 minutes now. I think we're awful close. Let's take a look. Yep, we're sneaking right up to 150. So at this point, we're going to add our grain bag. And one reason that this kit is different than the more beer kits that I've used is this is what they would call a mini mash kit. And that means that we're going to actually do a partial mash instead of a full boil with all extract. So anyway, we've added our grain bag. We'll cut the heat. I'm going to go ahead and dump a little bit of the excess in there. Just make sure we get all the sugars. And I'm also going to try and get this fully submerged if possible. Okay, so now we're going to set the timer for 25 minutes. Take a look here and let it sit. And after 25 minutes, we'll remove the grain, add one more gallon of water, and return to a boil. All right, so time has passed, and I apologize I missed a step or two, or I did not miss, but I didn't film. So I'm going to catch you up with where we're at. The boil is underway, meaning our 60 minute um, process of basically just waiting, making small additions here and there to our kettle. I'll show you that over there in a second. In the meantime, I used that time to clean my fermenter a little bit and get it ready and sanitized for the wort. And uh, that's about it. I've just kind of checked in with the recipe sheet and I'll show you where we're at. So. Since you were here last, we steeped our grains, went ahead and returned to a boil, and then added our dry and liquid malt extract. Now we're within the 60 minute boil, and we've added our uh, first hop addition at 60 minutes. I set my timer for 45 minutes, at which point we'll add another half ounce, and then we'll set it for 10 minutes and add the last half ounce for the final five minutes of the boil. And right in that time, we're also going to add our Warflock tablet, clarifier tablet there, and our yeast nutrient tablet there. So I will show you the kettle just at a steady boil over here. And we're sitting at three gallons of water right now, which is kind of what they've specified for the entire boil. And once we transfer to the fermenter, is when we'll add up to five and a quarter gallons total. So anyway, I'll set you up here in a little bit once we get to the hop additions and have you follow along at that point. Okay, so I had said earlier in the video while we were waiting on our boil, I would sort of explain some of the different equipment that I have and kind of where I'm headed. So in particular with our boil and mashing setup. I wanted to explain sort of my decision making there and kind of compare notes with anyone watching and see what you're using and why. Um, or if you're looking for something, kind of what your thought process is on what you might need. So the one kettle that I own is not the one that we're looking at. It's the one behind me it is a 20 gallon anvil kettle. And I guess a quick note on Anvil, I highly, highly recommend them. I've been very pleased with their shipping and their customer service and sort of um, support after the sale. And their product is really, really solid and uh, at a great price. So I'm planning to continue with the Anvil line to fill out the rest of my equipment. Um, but just wanted to give a quick note on that and we'll do more in-depth reviews on each item that I've got or the new things that are coming. So stay tuned for that. So I've got a 20 gallon kettle so far and that's perfect for 10 gallon batches uh, when we're talking about a 10 gallon extract batch and it will also handle a 10 gallon all grain batch. So as far as 10 gallons we're all set with that. The only problem is I'm currently doing extract, which means I need one vessel. And unless I'm going to do brew in a bag, which would also just require one vessel, um, I need a second uh, kettle or mash tun. 
And so what I'm going to go with is an additional 15 gallon anvil. And the reason is I need something to accommodate five gallon extract batches. And 15 gallon is the biggest you can go in the anvil line and still have your temp probe be in liquid. I think it's a uh, like four gallon ish uh, minimum capacity to reach the temp probe on the 15 gallon. But the good thing is it will also accommodate a 10 gallon um, either all grain or extract full boil, in which case I'm going to use the 20 gallon as my all grain mash ton. Whether I'm doing 5 gallon or 10 gallons all grain, the 20 gallon will handle both. And I think a 15 gallon would have also handled both, um, but just barely. And for whatever reason, I went with the 20 gallon just because I wanted a massive kettle. So um, you could probably get by just fine with two 15 gallons, uh, or in some cases, I've seen three pot setups, and you can look into that. Um, but for my particular purposes, I'm looking to use my 20 gallon with a false bottom as my mash tun, and then I'll transfer out of that in the future once I'm fully all grain, transfer that to the 15 gallon for our boil. So just wanted to give a quick word on that and maybe some advice to those of you who are looking to buy that you might look into 15 gallons and uh, see if that will suit your needs for either a 5 or a 10 gallon I think there are certain grain bills on a 10 gallon all grain that we're going to be real close to that 20 gallon capacity to where the 15 wouldn't have handled it. So it would look neat to have the same size vessels for everything and you'll see that in any of these complete systems that you can buy a uh, claw hammer or Blickman or whatever where it's three of the same size. I imagine they are uh, 15 gallon but anyway that's why I'm going the route I did so just wanted to give a word on that I'll see you when we get to our hop additions so 45 minutes into the boil at this point the recipe is asking for us to add half of an ounce of our Mount Hood hops I don't have a real fine scale yet so I'm just gonna do my best to put half of the pack into the boil we're also instructed to add our yeast fuel caplet and our Werflock tablet. So let me get these cut open and added to the boil. Eventually, I do need a hop scale so I can be real accurate with that. So maybe about half. There we go. I'm going to give that a little stir, and in 10 minutes, we're going to add our last half ounce of hops with five minutes remaining in the boil. So I'll see you then. And with five minutes to go, our last half ounce. Just finished the boil and cut the heat off after a 60 minute total. So now I've got this wart chiller with the garden hose connected and I just like to stir it around, bounce it around in the kettle and then that's running into a bucket so we can save the water but we're just going to chill it down from where it was at a boil so about 200 down to 80 degrees and then we'll transfer to our fermenter. And we're bringing our capacity in the fermenter up to Five and a half, a little more, or five and a quarter, excuse me. So we're gonna go to that line, just above five, accounting for a little bit of foam, so. 
get as close as we can. We are so close now. So we've got our five and a quarter gallons. If we look next on the recipe, it says to vigorously stir to make sure everything is mixed with the new water. Take a gravity reading, and then on the next page we're going to pitch our yeast. So uh, what I'm going to do is stir this up. Got my brew spoon here. Just to really incorporate everything. Okay, and I'm going to grab my hydrometer and take a gravity reading. According to the recipe, we're shooting for an original gravity of 1047 within a couple points. So I'm just going to take my sample off the sample port here. There we go, and let's see where we're at. Actually, I'm not going to want to do this over anything because it's going to go everywhere. I think we hit it about right on. I don't know if you can see that. We're maybe a little low, 1045 or so. Maybe 1042. Let's go ahead and give it 1042. We'll write that down. At this point, I'm going to do an additional step not listed on the recipe kit. This is something I've recently started doing on a regular basis. That's to oxygenate the wort. So I've got just a hardware store bottle of oxygen connected to my anvil oxygen rod. And for one minute, once the bubbles start, we're going to stir our mixture. What this does is just adds oxygen to the mixture, which produces a better environment for the yeast to really thrive and uh, do a better job of cleaning up the sugars in our mixture. You got to be careful, it will foam up quite a lot, so you don't want to go too crazy with this. And now our final step for a while is to add our yeast. This is a White Labs Cream Ale Blend WLP 080. I think it might be my first time using White Labs. And we'll just go ahead and add this to the fermenter. and get as much as possible out of there. Okay, now we'll cap it. I'm gonna move it inside and then put the airlock in. It's a small tip. You don't wanna be moving your vessel with the airlock on it or you'll get uh, sucked back pretty quickly and your airlock will be dry so we'll move it in, put the airlock on, and I will see you guys on the next video, most likely. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, let me know anything down in the comments, questions you have, or 
uh, the way that you do things around your brewery, and I'll see you on the next video.